Hey guys, it's Futon here, and welcome to my Elite Dungeons 1 uh, solo guide. Um, this is going to be a guide mainly based around mechanics, as I'm going to go through a full Elite Dungeon explaining everything as I go. Um, and note, this uh, Elite Dungeon 1 is far more difficult, far more punishing than Elite Dungeon 2. I would say probably twice as hard. Well, if you understand the place, it is faster than Elite Dungeon 2, but... If you are making much of any mistakes, you're going to die. And I stress that. If you make any error, and if you notice any problems, you're going to drop. Now, no, you could do the entire dungeon with magic, and I'm not going to say you can't. It's actually faster, but for safety precautions and learning, we're going to have two presets. So this is the first one with magic. Everything here that is a tier 92 is going to be pretty quick for tier 90. You do not need the Karomi switch for the method I'm going to show you to at least guarantee um, a three. You could get a three cycle with Maniacal pretty easily, or you could at least guarantee a four cycle because even if you go down with the crystal, you're probably still going to get a four cycle regardless. So I have a method around that so that you don't have to worry too much. Uh, the minion mine, you definitely want 10 at very least in case you screw up on Sirio. Um, as a note, you're only going to be using magic with the methods I'm showing you during the bosses. So this is your boss setup. So you're going to be teleporting in and out quite a bit. Um, this, however, is your clearing setup. As a note, you do not need the Saren God Bow at all. If you do not have the Saren God Bow, you would just have the uh, Ascensions in the set and then just switch out the chins. That's really all there is to it. Um, Blade of Die, Switch, Shield is just... If you decide the range of bosses, I sometimes I say screw it. If I have like full health going into the um, Sanctum Guardian, I'll just use that. It doesn't really make much of any difference. But anyway, um, also you want to have your Beast of Burden set to be food. Because you can get Wombo Combo, as I like to call it. Or, um, I don't know, Meleeers like to come up and um, while something else is doing a spec, Meleeers like to come up and knock your purr off and then you're dead. There's no questioning. Um, either way, so we're going to go ahead and set this up. This assumes that you have the Temple of Amanishi for the Max Portal as well. Um, as a note, this is not a method to get your comp cape back. If you want to get your comp cape, just go with a group. It is far more effective. Far easier. But uh, anyway, this is going to assume you have Bladed Dive Switch with at least some decent knowledge of switching. So we're going to start this off with the first section here where you're going to want to pray range or pray magic. You want to have a bladed dive, especially for this. So you want a bladed dive. You can skip nearly all the NPCs here so you can go all the way down here, swap the chins, and uh, just basically go in with chinning. As a note, you want to be making sure you're paying attention to your prayer. You want to have overloads up at all times. Prayers up. Because like, as you notice, you sometimes get this get stun locked. This place is a very big stun lock. So if you're going to do some kind of thresh or something like that, you definitely want to remind yourself that you need to do anticipate and such before it. Or else you can just get canceled. Especially with detonate. Always hear anticipate before you do a detonate. Um, if you don't, well, that detonate is likely to get canceled. So when you're running through here, let's go through here again all the way here and run all the way to the corner. Um, okay, there's offhand. I don't have that found. We'll get that gets stolen. So now switch to protect melee. And here we go. This is here. Make sure I've anticipated. Boom. Or you can stun them and then do this. As a note, there is a mini boss that can spawn right over here. And I think it did spawn. Ye uh, yes. His name is Zane the Water Shifter. You are in for a lot of hurt if he spawns. There's nothing you can do. There's no avoiding him. And, um, yeah. So, just deal with him. Do not kill him. He's not worth the time. No many bosses in here are worth the time. Just, uh, pay attention to your prayer when it's getting up. Because he will knock your prayer off. So, move down to here. Switch to range. Or magic protect. And this is where I would switch to the Serengabo because it's a single target. 
and you got to kill these three to proceed. As a note, here, just kill them. Nothing too special. Luckily, the boss, the mini boss, got trapped behind um, the mobs here. So I got extremely lucky that he did. But he still can hit you. He just he can't use the melee. Which the melee is the problem with the boss because he can use an ability called Smash. When Smash hits you, your purse gets disabled. That is a very bad thing. All right, so make sure your prayers are kept up. Make sure you have food in your inventory at all times. This is... I can't stress this enough. But how, like, dangerous this place is. Alright, so let's kill these five off. And with the Saren God bow, you can get the distance. No, you can do this with a Nox bow, but then you're going to be switching inventories as well. It's not something necessarily you want to deal with. Okay, let's go here. Alright, now once you're here, you want to switch back. No, actually, no, chin, you don't need chin for this section. You want to switch and hug this corner here so that you don't grab the aggression of these five and three over here. As you see now, you're starting to see the fury of the uh, stun locks. <sighs> Alright. 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 Now after this, boy, to die switch. Uh, you're going to be skipping this entire room. So this is just going to be a tank gauntlet. Just go ahead through, surge through. Try to... There we go, the way to dive all the way through, past the chest, and then when you get down to here, you see these three right down here? Just grab your chins. Grab your chins. Dissipate. Boom. With snapshot, rapid fire. And, uh,. Doors open, so now teleport out. Then um, that will despawn everything in that half of everything in that room. All right, guys. Um, before anyone says anything, I kind of messed up in the original run through of Sanctum Guardian, so I'm redoing it. But anyway, for this fight, we're gonna withdraw our mage preset. Uh, Sanctum Guardian is a pretty straightforward fight, though it is extremely ignoring, annoying if you do not understand what your attack scores are. And I actually died in the clip. Um, yeah, I died to that, and I died to something else with Masuda, but I redid Masuda on the thing. And then after the death, I still screwed up massively. So we're just going to do this with a, kind of an easy strat. This is a beginner's method. Um, really, to be honest with you, Meta is your friend at this boss, as well as the other two. So we're going to start this off with just a flat-out Vuln, or try to Vuln this boss. Okay, so we're going to go through here. And we're going to focus on staying far enough back so that his melee hits don't hit us while we're here. Alright, that should be far enough. If they do hit you, they're going to hit you pretty hard. But, yeah. And also, make sure you're overloaded. You have a complete accuracy here with, yeah, with the basic items. And you can still split during this section here. So, the idea really is to keep on moving. And then once he fires this off, you want to get over here as far as you can, to be honest, to place this. I generally, what I do is just go through here, place it, and then while I'm running back, because he's going to do the water spout. Actually, I don't know how that melee hit missed. It's going to go all the way around, and then when I get over here, I just soul split it and go through. 
And then whenever it's done, I'm just going to go back and focus through here and just work my way back. As a note, the um, range hits could be completely dodgeable because of the way the mechanic works. And whenever he dips down, just protect melee and then just come right on back. So it's just basically going back and forth for this boss. It's just the simplest way to kill him. It's not the fastest way, but for beginners and so forth, because like I said, this really is a beginner's guide to elite dungeon solos. Because um, you could easily make 10 to 15 mil an hour here, even if you're a complete garbage because of that. So just make sure you just don't step in the squares like I almost did. And just continue placing them. So this gives you a lot more ample time before you end up clogging up this alleyway. And boom. So like here, you need to be aware of your attack distance as you're out of it right now. And then okay, right here. Alright, so now we can kind of make sure we're, we're at half, so we're doing good. Just so make sure you don't clog up your to and froms with the um, mistake. And make sure you have auto retaliate off, of course, because that can end up getting you dropped pretty quickly. back here and while he's doing this soul split make sure you uh, make sure you are watching these tiles come on okay, I, got, I got it close enough anyway soul split Sure you keep your prayer up. Move back over. Of course, I broke my camera because it's so dumb. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Okay, broke my camera. So sorry, guys. Because I have shift modifiers and I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Close as you can with this. And so I'm just going to move over here. Why? Oh yeah, because I'm out of attack range. Let's heat up. There we go. Now it's Sanctum Guardian. Uh, yeah, that that would have hit the reflect anyway, because he was doing his death animation. So whatever. All right, so that's Sanctum Guardian 101. It's very simple to do. So hopefully that helped with that section. And then next we're going to be moving on to the sewers. Okay, now that we've finished the Sanctum Guardian fight, we're going to be going into the second section of the this uh, Quarian Gauntlet um, right here. It's going to end up being the worst part of it. You're going to be wanting Shins on for the entire time. There is, no, I, don't, I think there's only like one section where a uh, Nox or Saren Gabo is useful here. So we're going to go right back into the dungeon. Um, we're going to go into here, right here, and then right click this chest, teleport to location, and we're going to go back to the Guardian. No, you need to be quick because these stars, things start moving the moment that you spawn the dungeon. So as you see here, yeah, like, like the um, Sanctum Guardian fight. So let's go past the Sanctum Guardian area here. Uh, for the first section here, you want protection from melee. Um, no, this is a section where you need to be careful. You need to be variant. These things can do stupid crap and you can end up just dying. So your number one problem is these guys right here. These guys are your enemy. You need to stay from the melee layers. So you want to walk underneath this Quilk Zealot. And then you want to start attacking this one right here with um, with your uh, chins. That will force it to be able to attack what's underneath. So that you can block the melee layers. 
behind this one crustacean here, or behind any crustaceans that are spawned. As you see here, my did my purge get knocked off, or did I have to turn it off? Uh, nope, I got my purge knocked off. So this is where the next dangerous part is. This is where you need to stun lock. You need to stun lock these ASAP. So stun lock them and then rapid fire them. There is no point in devotioning this because if you get if those meleeers catch up to you, it doesn't matter what you devoted. These uh, mercenaries, devotion doesn't do you no good. It right there, knock my prayer off. It doesn't really like you're you're best off honestly soul splitting. Into if there's any mailers around you, um, that's the reason why you try to stun lock the Death Lotus and why I highly suggest you range this place, at least for the minions clear, because it just avoids an unnecessary death. With uh, magic, yeah, you can quick clear them, or you can just flat out ignore. You're actually better off ignoring them. Um, yeah, you're better off just ignoring them and just tanking them all the way. So here's one spot where you can use the SGB if you want. Nothing here requires it though. Go through here. This down. Yeah. So let's go all the way through here. There's really no point in praying anything because you're likely to get your prayers knocked off from these meleeers. And if you're if you're using um soul split, you can get your prayer knocked off. Just remember that you have your chins on. So. And if you're chinning everything in the room, you're going to get good heals. So it's not like you're completely out of the water, but it's just, yeah, there's no point of protection first. You're going to end up getting just knocked anyway. Especially considering Smash is a basic as well, so they don't need any Infern to use it. It is something they need to remove from here to make this place any enjoyable, because it's just it's just an uh, it's just annoying to just oh yeah let's just walk up to this person and um, clean them. So just square these guys off. Like I said, it's just easier to soul split and eat food. There's only one or two conditions where I say you don't soul split, and that's the reason why I brought an extremely a big amount of food and a big amount of pots, because like I said, these are safety shots. You might as well just do this and um, clear these off. And go through the door. So it's just safer. Uh, here's where the Saren God Bow slash Nox Bow. I like using it because it will avoid setting the aggression off of these guys over here. You want to completely bypass these and try not to set these guys off. These guys are not a danger now, but later on they can build up full power and they can use something called Omni Power. Now, no, if your prayer gets knocked off when you get hit with an Omni Power, you die. They're 90% survival rate, 90% death rate. So, as a note here, you want a good way to dive. And I triggered them, unfortunately. You have to trigger those ones down there, so I triggered everything in the room. This is going to be wonderful. So you want to try to avoid triggering anything here, but now that we're here, make sure you have your anticipate up and start chinning away. Um, you want to definitely target the cell swords before you target anything, because they'll do their die die by the blade special, and um, yeah, it's not a fun special. But it looks like we're gonna kill them first. So like I said, just protect. Don't do any protection prayers here. Your prayers are just going to get wiped right off. There's no point. I've learned this lesson the hard way. It sucks that you can't use protection prayers, but it's just safer. Because, like I said, soul split can't be knocked off. Okay, okay, you see this guy right here? If you see these guys get that high LP, kill them. Or that high on their adrenaline bar, kill them. Like, literally just drop them. Like I said, that thing gets a full. Purr gets knocked off. Omni power. You die. Alright, so quickly try to avoid. Let's hug a corner. He hugged this corner specifically. But since we omni power, or we killed that one, we're pretty well safe. Okay, just kill. Binding them, by the way, it works as well as a stun. 
run over the corner, surge, way to dive over as soon as you can, get into a corner here, swap back to the chins, and then blow these Z-Lots out of the water. You get away with um, Soul Split here. You might as well Soul Split. Unless you, um, and as note, you want to look at here your mini map to see if you pull the aggression of the um, Death Lotus, which is right here. I didn't pull the aggression, so we can just kill away. We're safe here. And you just soul split because of the because of these guys. There isn't no, there's no rhyme or reason it's just other than the fact that prayers can be instantly disabled here, and soul split cannot. And if you get your prayer knocked off, you can't inactivate soul split. But yeah. So now that this is clear, we're going to be going to the next section, which is Masuda. Okay, so once you're done with the um, clearing part, we're going to be going into here with Masuda. Uh, make sure you withdraw your range preset, and for Masuda, you're going to be one to do protect, me or protect melee nearly the entire fight. Um, the only part you're going to do one to do protect range or magic is during the last uh, two sections, which one of them is a tank gauntlet. So we'll go into the throne room, and right here, we're just going to go up and start the fight with Masuda. Make sure you keep your prayers up at all times. If your prayers fall off, there's a good chance you're just going to kind of die. <laughs> so for this fight, we're mainly going to be running Masuda around just to stall his attacks, and um, because everything here is based on how long, um, how many attacks he does, eventually he'll be like Max and just attack you from a distance anyway, but yeah, so we want to be paying a little bit of attention, stay away from this. Get all the way back up here to the corner. Note that these attacks are a tick late on their movement. So, yeah, you want to be careful and make sure that you understand that. So, if you surge too close to him, he'll just still hit you anyway. Um, also, a note with this clone. When he's spawning this clone, you need to stop moving. Unless you're under, uh, like, a pink down here. Because if you move too far away from that clone, that clone is just going to hit through your prayers. Because it's going to despawn for... Oh, shit! Oh, right there is a prime example of why you do not MD him during that section as well. Because he will hit you with a big magic hit at the end. Right wherever he's standing. The last one will go there. So, okay. Oops. I am making a lot of mistakes here. Um, here. Alright, just keep on building to meta. Forgot to adrenaline. Oh well. Move away because he's going to do that. And then right after this, he's going to do a random spec and then he's going to start the spin cycle shortly. He always does it. Oh, actually, he's doing it randomly now, but normally he always does it right after there. So keep close with the clone. Now surge away. Let me just keep a distance from him. Use abilities as you run. And just surge straight through him. There it's taken care of. Alright, we'll force this down. Now we're in the second stage. For second stage, you're going to be one to make sure you have plenty of prayer up. Uh, we're going to be killing these geysers um, as they pop up. As a note, just make sure your prayer is up full because if you lose prayer, you're going to get dropped. Okay, and then we just want to be surging, barging to all of these uh, geysers. And we want to try to get MD to every single one of them because it's just a lot cleaner. Force bar just on cooldown. Because you want to be in the note is you have to be MD to these things because then they'll give you the um, damage reduction on the water strike for the next section. And if you don't have any protection, that thing can literally hit you a 9k. So, and as you notice, you're getting piled by attacks here. These are uh, 
these attacks can hit quite hard, and the square distance you need to be is within two squares, so if I'm standing in this one, it will get them all here. We're getting really lucky with spawns, them being very close together, but these can be spread out, like one can spawn top, one can spawn bottom, and then it can just alternate and give you a very bad day. So, and as you see here, I am getting hit really, really hard. The worst part of the fight. And the most annoying part. Like, if you could just not spawn these, but I have a feeling that they're never going to change this. So, and now that Mr. Yep, you see there's that water strike. So, while Mr. Suda is going here, alright, now that we're doing this, we want to kind of keep him down. So, we're going to want to protect Rain just entirely until he jumps up. And I just know it's just another spout. Ooh, luckily I got that on time. Now you want to keep as far away from Masuda as you absolutely can because it gives you a longer time to react or my prayers and everything can just not work. Sun. Either way, I'm not going to get killed by that strike. So then basically at this point, protect range until he jumps like that. And then put protect magic and just kill him. Whatever my abilities just get eaten. And that's really the gist of the fight. The worst part about this boss really is just pay, making sure you're not in D to him when you can be um, getting away from him and so forth. It's just a matter of just paying attention to him and eating. Don't be afraid to eat. Um, you don't necessarily need a yak for this. Like I said, this is all videos, all due to safety strats. So go with this. All right. There we go. And just make sure you just don't make no major mistakes, because like I said, a major mistake will end up warping in a death. Um, and like I said, if you didn't have um that protection amount there, that attack would have ended up hitting you like five times more. <laughs> like right now this water strike has a 65% damage reduction on me. Boom right here. Alright, there we go. Treasure hunter key. Yeah. Uh, what was the actual drop? Oh, just dust. Alright, now for this section, it's easier to just clean it right now. Um, they massively nerfed this since release. Um, just go down here. None of these uh, will attack you until um, you actually attack it. So we want to keep our drain here for this section. So just hit this. Dragon's Breath. Wild. Alright. Then Devo now. Kill it for the Devo extension. Let's fix. Now, for me, I could do the kill on what supplies I have, but I am not going to do that for the sake of the video, so we're going to teleport out for the last section. But you have unlocked the last chest. You have all the teleports now. So we're going to go to um, Siri itself. No, no, none of the other extra um, pillars will strike you at this point. Okay, so now that we're done with uh, Masuda and done with the querying, we're going to be going into the Siri fight. The Siri fight is the most annoying part of this entire dungeon. Um, we're going to have to end up... I'm going to show you a method of doing this with just um, without using Karomi and without going down. As a note, um, you might be, Mondra is the best aura to use here because it works in sunshine, um, but if you don't have Mondra, use something like Dark Magic or, I mean, Manny helps with Sirius head, but it actually doesn't help at all with the crystals because it doesn't work within sunshine. So, yeah, I realized that yesterday, um, that Manny is actually potentially useless here because, yeah. 
The only part you need help with is damage boosting during the suns. But um, so what we're gonna do is it just this boss is you have to drop him down to 7.2 million LP, which will then allow you to get access to the crystals on his back. And I'm just gonna pull up a a little bit of a close up so you guys can see there are crystals on his back. So with this on his back, those are the target. Each one in a solo has 150k LP. And the healers will come out of a black spot here and heal him. As a note, there's two ways of doing this. to guarantee a 4 cycle, guarantee a 3 cycle. If you go down at any point during this fight, you will end up doing a three, a tough 3 cycle, or you'll end up doing a 4 cycle anyway. So Karoming, in my opinion, from use is, I don't really know a point. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate Madrat Aura. So... I think Mondra is the best thing to use here. It is once per day, and you can wax it. I mean, normally I get to this point at Siryu, and then I'll wax. I'll use Eeyore, and then I'll do a whole other run right afterwards. So, either way, this is, um, so we're going to go ahead and activate this. We're going to have Protect Magic up, and this is going to be a lot of proof looking. This boss has, you're going to be on your feet. You're not going to stop moving. Um, and I highly just make sure that you, Whenever you hit the 7.2k, that you're going to be um, having full drain as well, because you're going to need it for the straps here. All right, so now no, you can do this with a melee switch as well. I haven't yet learned or implemented it, but here when you get the big breath, make sure that you uh, res that or de res it, debill it, or devo it at all times. That thing can hit you for your full health. And the gist of this fight is to move around from these shadows. So, like, when this one comes in here for the arrow, switch to the arrow to spawn, and it will target you. Just move from there. Eventually, there will be an arrow that's going to pop out right here. So, like, a huge breath there. Devotion. Boom. Done. Dealt with. And you could keep alive here if you know how to soul split flick without really any issue. It's just a matter of keeping the prayer points, really. So here's the arrow. It'll fire straight down across. If you're on a square with these uh fi um these shadows, it's four point um three k a tick, whatever. So I splashed. It's fine. And just make sure you're always in attack distance of this boss because yeah, this is how it works. And just pay attention to the floors. Pay attention to the shadows whenever it sticks its hand down. It'll pull a shadow out from underneath you, so you just need to move. And like I said, it's like here I don't have anything, so I'm going to fill it. Beautiful. And you can just keep your health held high just with that. Um, so just don't miss your prayer flips. The only time you actually have to have magic up is whenever he's firing that attack, so. And you don't necessarily, you can stand on that to inert the shadows, but I don't. I've never had good success with that, so I just don't do it. At least that's my suggestion. Prayer up. Boom. Oh, I don't have the wand in the R slot. Whoa. What just happened? Okay. I want to know why my wand is not equipping. Oh, I'm just pressing the wrong abilities. Okay, well... Oh well, it is what it is. I'll take a sign of that. So like I said, be very careful here. And, as, and also surge is delayed. Don't press the wrong abilities. So this boss is very unforgiving. And I already, I just messed up that. I just really messed up. I, I think I failed this skill. <clears throat> Alright, just get on top of his back. Put this surge into it. Sun instantly. Volander and your sun. Your two abilities. A dream pot. Drop your minds. 
and go. And um, use this fix. Deep impact, fall by rack. These hits are awful. Yeah, this is absolute awful hits. We might get it. We got it? Okay, got it. Alright, so that's a guaranteed free cycle. If you fail that, you want to wait until the Uber heals. So I'll show you what you would do right afterwards. So you build up here. Make sure you have it. Vong. Deto. Because you just build there and just AFK. Boom. Deto. That. That. No, Onslaught isn't going to guarantee we get you it either. So when this comes back down, this is the only point where you might want to have a chromium switch, but I just generally just don't. I know how this thing works, so I don't bother. Just demo this at this point, because these things are hitting you, and yeah. Just clear everything out. And make sure when you fall down that you move off the square you're falling down, because invin um, invisible tendrils will pop at that point and just kill you anyway. <laughs> So with that as a note, all right, whatever. Take the heal. Make sure you keep your overload up. Make sure you keep your prayers up, and just go. And if you're really high health like this, don't bother soul split flicking, because more than likely you'll be able to heal back from whenever Res comes back up from the super breaths. At this point, it's kind of like Telos in a way. The reses keep you alive. Oh, I just don't have it. Alright, cool. At this point, I'm going to start soul split flicking. I generally, I was doing it all the time just because it was just kind of fun. Because ED2 is nothing but soul split flicking to stay alive. Alright, hit me, please. As you see, that thing can hit you extremely high and one bang you <laughs> if you fail the res. So just make sure you're confident with it. And like I said, you could try practicing this in story mode as well. So. We're gonna demo this one. Alright. No point in resing. Just the billet. Prayer is up. And this fight's all about just paying attention to the floor and paying attention to your surroundings and just using your abilities in tandem. Like I said, you could just easily keep your health to full using no food. You only want food for when you screw up. Like if you step on a shadow, you step on something. Yeah. And as you see the sign, or I look back what I signed to earlier. I think I just wasn't. I was trying to figure out why my keybind wasn't working, but it ended up being just me misclicking. So. Cool. And you just get in a rhythm of doing it. As a note, you also want to be careful whenever you phase him, because the moment that you do. Shadows like that will appear, and they will just, yeah, they take a little bit to despawn. So we're just going to do the same thing as we did before. Get up here, surge up, sun, planet feet. We're going to instantly vault it, do two abilities, a dream pot, wild magic, place our minds. There we go. It's fixed immediately.
whatever we're gonna eat impact for our next stretch. Boom. Always rack after the deep impact. Do not rack at this boss point at any other point in time. At this point, um, yeah, this is where I could attempt the two cycle with melee. You would do a swap and then, yeah. Either way, actually you would have got it a little lower. But at this point, make sure you vault it. You cannot actually soul split these things even though I have it on. I'm just being lazy and not turning soul split off. So that is something you could do here. And then, okay. Build up a Ghetto. Not Ghetto really late. Good Ghetto. See, you can easily put a 50k on it. I mean, yeah. There's no point not. Alright. So have Protect Magic on for this section. Make sure you move off the square that you were on. Alright. And then just depot the first one. Okay. And at this point, just knock it down to 7.2 uh, mil. And we're going to finish this off. Res, I don't know why it's res, but splash anyway. Um, that's the one good thing about maniacal here is that that won't splash. But as I realized, that maniacal doesn't work at sunshine. It's actually useless to Siryu. It is good for Sanctum and Masuda, but not for Siryu because the important DPS factor of it is actually the crystals, and which you do not have um, an option on that anyway. So that's just gonna take the hit because that's so cool. But well, it decided to just do its thing. Right, yeah. And eventually, once you do this a few times, this is just going to be second nature dodging all the shadows. <sighs> Alright. Prayer. Kill me. Or not. Going off a slow. Let me just speed this up a little bit. And also, Resonance is just a good way of blocking. You can to build that too, but I prefer Resonance at this point. You can also reflect it as well, just in a note. So, like, I can reflect it. Although it hit zero, but you, it's still a decent hit back. Because it hits before the uh, prayer reduction, so it reflect back like a 5k or something like that. Pretty pretty nutty reflect. So if you get shield swap into reflect, it's a much better idea then. But we're over here this time, so we need to get in here. Takes forever to get back. Um, the ability, thank god we already have this, there are two abilities, a Dren, Dren please, thank you, drop this before we go through with, uh, make sure you always drop your mines before you do your sfix, or do it right as you drop so you don't get pushed back, do never drop your mines while you're doing this fix. Mm. 
And there is Sirio. So we got, I don't even know. I think I got eight skills for that. So that is Sirio 101. If you fail the first three cycle, don't panic. Just do what you would do on the middle crystal, on the first crystal, and just do an extra cycle. It's not that bad of a boss. Um, really, just pay attention and make sure you just don't lose focus. So looking through here, I'm just going to show you how much the skills are and how much they're worth. So I think I got eight skills from that kill. And also with the Onyx Dust, it also replaces, it'll pay for your deaths as well. So Serenic for the skills. You're going to crap yourself. That was worth more than that. Yeah, it was worth a lot more than that. So, anyway, that is Elite Dungeon 1 Solo. This place is extremely profitable if you know what you're doing. Um, I don't actually think it's worth doing an ARPV and then Telos and an AOD. And considering that Madra does not work on the crystals, or no, Maniacal doesn't because it's all in sunshine. Yeah, I just realized that. So, thank you guys very much for watching and have a wonderful day.